So let's uh, look at uh, one of the things that you might want to do when you've uh, edited a, a body of work. Of course, you'll want to share them. You'll want other people to see the work that you've not only been capturing, but you've been editing quite carefully. Uh, the idea is you want to communicate certain things, so we must get those images out there. So uh, one of the things you may notice already have noticed is there's a little icon with an up arrow, and this is the share icon. Uh, and you, if you tap on it, you will see your Facebook and Instagram icons there. And I'm going to ask you not to do this. Uh, not because I've got anything against Facebook or Instagram, but this workflow will export uh, an image of very low quality to Facebook. It will export one only 960 pixels with quite a lot of image compression. It is not going to showcase how good your camera is uh, or the quality of your editing. So uh, there is another way to get a much better quality image uh, to um, social media than this workflow here. And that workflow is to export the image from one of those lower options there. Uh, export to your camera roll, export to your files on your tablet, uh, or take complete control over how big or the quality of that export by clicking that lower icon there. So once you've exported that, and it might be to your camera roll or your folder, just open up uh, Facebook on your mobile device, um, click on photo, and then find the photo that you've exported from from starting with Facebook first, not starting with Lightroom. Don't go from Lightroom to Facebook. Uh, go to Facebook, click on photo, then find the photo that you, the high quality photo that you've exported. Um, so in this instance, I've gone to camera roll. I've picked up my picture of my duck. I am now uploading that and you'll see that this is more than double the resolution of the default workflow there. So we're going to get a, a, an image that is the maximum quality that Facebook supports, 2048. This is going to look fabulous on a tablet and uh, we can now export that and I can say something about my beautiful duck before I post here. Another way of exporting and sharing perhaps a, a body of work is to create an album of uh, images that you've been capturing. Um, you can just go to your grid view, look for the plus icon. You can select image using the organization menu items. You can decide which images uh, go over to this new album. Once you've got the album sorted with 6, 10, 60 images that you want to share, you will now um, click on those uh, three horizontal dots next to your album. The album by default will be private. No one can see what's inside your album, but you'll want to enable sharing. And once you've enabled sharing, you're, you're going to go over to a couple of the options such as link settings. I like people to see the camera settings I've been using when I've been capturing my images my aperture, my shutter speed, my ISO. So I'm going to enable show metadata. I'm going to hide the location info if I've been using maybe a, um, a mobile device such as a smartphone. I don't want people to know um, where I am maybe or where this person is that I've been photographing. So I will hide the show location info. I will allow comments and likes and I, if I want people to be able to download them so they can download my files to their devices, I'll also enable allow JPEG downloads. Um, I will be given a link and then I can share that link. And the beautiful thing about the links I'm now sharing with my friends and my family is they can view this in any web browser on a mobile device or a desktop computer. They will get a grid view of the images in the album. They can tap uh, on an image or click if they're on a desktop computer. And this will go into very high resolution, much higher than um, social media platforms like Facebook supports. So this is really going to showcase 
case the quality of my imagery and uh, if you've um, enabled comments you'll be able to see the comments on uh, or in Lightroom on your mobile device if anybody makes a comment. I think you need a, a Lightroom creative account uh, to actually make those comments. Sometimes you'll be wanting to export a file, not for social media, but you want to put on an external drive um, and then maybe um, transfer over to your TV or computer or give to a friend. And for me, the, uh, the starting point for files that I want to share are ones that showcase the quality of my work. So the starting point for me would be that bottom option export where I can control exactly the size of the export and I'll choose long side 3840 which is the 4k dimensions and then I can choose to export typically I'll choose a JPEG quality of 90% and most people will never see the difference between 90 and 100 but a 90% quality will have a file size typically half that of 100% but have all of the quality that will appear on a TV or whatever. Let's move to um, a section of this uh, where we're moving slightly beyond what Lightroom. It's a way of showcasing maybe some of the limitations of Lightroom CC that you may or may not be aware of. It's also showcasing that there are apps coming to tablets which we typically would have required a desktop computer to do this level of sophisticated editing. And um, one of the things that um, we cannot do on the mobile devices that we can do on the desktop version of Lightroom CC is uh, merging bracketed shots. It's called HDR merge. So if you couldn't get all of the tonality because it was such a high contrast scene, this is the Transformer buildings in Hong Kong, I've actually merged five separate exposures and then edited into one final exposure. This is um, possible in the Lightroom on your uh, laptop computer or desktop computer, not the classic version, just the CC version. Uh, and we can do that there and if we do that the image will be transferred back to our mobile versions as well. The other thing we can do is another merging which is the panoramic merging. So we wanted to create um, a panorama but our wide angle lens wasn't quite wide enough. We can do a panoramic merge in the desktop version as well. Okay moving beyond the desktop version now is we're going into another Adobe app which has made an appearance on two iPads in um, 2019 which is Photoshop for iPad. We have seen trimmed down versions before but nothing quite so fully featured and no it's not as fully featured as the desktop version but it does allow us to do quite a lot of sophisticated editing which is a uh, above and beyond what we can do in Lightroom CC. So I'll just quickly showcase some of those things now. For instance, this is uh, the Tora Gates from Japan. We've got a little bit of a white line running between two of the, um, the upright orange poles there. Now we can attempt to um, uh, clone or heal that out in Lightroom. It is a little bit of a fiddly job. It's much easier just to go and open in Photoshop on an iPad and with a stylus or my finger just uh, drag over uh, the offending area and Photoshop is likely to make a faster and better job of that than a Lightroom itself. So Photoshop just tends to do a better job. And once we've done it in Photoshop I'll just export it back to Lightroom so the edited version sits alongside the original version in my Lightroom catalog. To give you an example of really where Photoshop um, draws on its strength as a multi-layered editing program is we can start um, uh, taking elements from multiple files and, and uh, spitting them out as one single file. Uh, this is uh, two images that my wife captured. Um, one image has the dog looking at the camera but the boy is blinking so has his eyes closed and on the other image the boy has his eyes open but the dog is looking away. Now this is just a one minute edit inside of Photoshop to make sure that we get the best of both worlds. We take um, the eyes of the uh, boy wide open, uh, the dog looking at the camera and it becomes the perfect moment even though each image was captured a fraction of a second apart. 
Another example, and again this is just a one minute edit, I'm only actually going to show you some one and two minute edits here. I've taken two pictures of a house I used to own. Uh, one image is with um, uh, just twilight, the second image is with the lights on at night time. I put the, uh, the night time scene as a layer above. Um, the, the, the twilight scene and I've just changed the blend mode of that layer to lighten. That's the only thing I actually did. Just change the blend mode, just a single option and that uh, switch the lights on inside of the house in one single image. You may have seen this done in real estate photography a thousand times before. Um, this one, I actually captured this image uh, looking back towards Melbourne before sunrise, but I decided I would add a sun in post-production and also create the reflection in the water. So I just used a stock image of a, a starburst and added that on a, a layer. And in order to get the reflection, I had to duplicate that, um, uh, flip it, um, so that the sun was in place on the water. And again, that was just a, a one minute edit. In this particular image, I've added a, a creative border, I've added a little bit of lens flare, I've added a little bit of texture, all just dragging in separate images and putting them on layers and then just doing a little bit of basic masking and using a few basic um, blend modes. Um, in this image, this is a stock image of a man smoking a pipe. I've grabbed another stock image of just the smoke, switched the blend mode to screen, and now the smoke is coming out of the pipe. And I've just got a little bit of a um, uh, few options there for transform, so I can move that smoke into just the right place. This is one of my own images, which is the perfect composite. I've got the perfect wave smashing into the rock and another one where I've got the perfect um, stormy sky and I just um, add uh, the waves uh, from one file into another file. And as they'll probably take no more than 30 seconds apart, uh, but I've got um, a more accurate representation of what I experienced over a several minute period rather than a split second. This is a little bit more of a creative edit here. I'm using a little bit of flare, stock image of some uh, snowflakes falling. Uh, again, just a one minute edit, um, just to uh, um, take a very cold, sterile looking studio portrait and giving it sort of a winter dramatic feel uh, by adding a few layers. And um, as again, if every time I've edited one of these, I'll either export it or quick export so it goes back and appears in my Lightroom catalog. Okay, so there is a before and after of that edit. Uh, one I did uh, last year recently in Japan was a two layer edit. Um, the model is the same model. Uh, I just got her to um, collapse the umbrella and move over to the right side and uh, asked her now pretend you're presenting the umbrella to yourself. I did a very simple um, graduated mask. So it hid the top half of one file and revealed the layer of underneath. And I was able to duplicate the model and that took about 10 seconds. Um, this one took a little bit longer because I'm introducing different elements into the photograph, but same model and it's gone into the background there. This is often referred to as a fixed position composite. I've got tutorial of these using the full version of Photoshop, but I'm happy to say now these are more than manageable just on the iPad app. And uh, again, I've got a tutorial of this one on my website, a free tutorial. And again, just using uh, a stock texture, um, one of my own borders, um, trees inverted so they're upside down, and a profile a shadow of my daughter's face there, and creating a, an interesting double exposure. You may have seen these done in camera occasionally, this one now done uh, in post-production. And there's a creative illustration, repeating the uh, same image multiple times, getting a little bit of a multiplicity effect going on there, adding some texture, adding a little bit of split toning, and uh, we're getting that final outcome. 
Okay, so this is uh, basically concluding the uh, tutorial now. Uh, there is um, an ebook you can download with the slide deck that I've been using, so you can walk your way through this. And this uh, slide deck will include these uh, following slides, which you may want to study at a little bit more length uh, than I've got time to go into here. This is a key of what all of the icons are doing in the edit. Uh, when you're editing your images. I think we've covered pretty much most of them so you you won't be at a loss of what uh, most of them do. You might find one or two that I haven't covered in any detail there. We have some just uh, shortcuts. These are the, uh, how you can use one or more image by tapping or sliding and what they do when you tap the image as opposed to what you do when you tap the sliders. And if you've attached a keyboard to your tablet, there are a few um, keys that also will have an influence uh, what happens when you're working on a tablet. Um, generally, they're working with um, the way you rate, flag, uh, reject images. Uh, and so we don't have to go in and do that as a separate task. We can simply edit an image, tap the number five, and it becomes a five-star hero image without going into the rating uh, module of Lightroom on a tablet. Okay, so obviously this was quite a lot of work for me to generate and I am giving uh, all of this information away um, as a free download. And remember there's an ebook you can download. If you found this um, very useful and you want to support uh, future content creation, this probably took me two weeks to create, um, uh, think about buying me a coffee and or shouting me a coffee as they say in Australia and uh, just make a small donation uh, via PayPal. There will be a link in the info section below the movie uh, on this page in the ebook you can just click uh, or tap and this will take you to a PayPal donation link and just donate as much as you feel uh, you've got value from this product. Uh, if you're wanting to have ongoing conversations it is very difficult answering every question via social media now. Some people will fire questions at me via messenger or email but uh, with 95,000 followers just on YouTube alone uh, I have had to switch notifications off. I do offer a service though for people who want to have a, me as an ongoing mentor and tutor where they can ask a question any day of the week and I also um, uh, as well as answering those questions I will also give a one hour seminar uh, to those uh, patrons. Um, just uh, go head over to patreon.com look for Mark Ayler obviously that's me and just consider either one of those three tiered levels if you just want to message me it's just two dollars um, uh, per month uh, if you want to uh, access uh, free ebooks and uh, 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 seminars, Q&A forums, then you'll move up to that $5. If you want uh, limitless uh, photo critiquing, then you'll move up to that $10 level there. Okay, and that concludes the editing images in Lightroom CC. Just remember, there is a classic version of this tutorial as well. I'm Mark Gaylor. Uh, good to have you along for that very long ride looking through Lightroom CC. Uh, cheers and I'll catch you online. Just give me a thumbs up if you found this useful. Thank you. Be sure to check out all of the movies in this Lightroom CC Masterclass series. There's also a supporting ebook that you can download from my website. Just head over to www.markgaylor.com and then look for that downloads link. If you find any of my resources useful, just consider making a small donation. This will help me create future learning resources. I also host a Patreon site. This is going to allow you to join Q&A forums where you'll have your individual questions answered and also attend seminars. I'll also give a photo critique service. Okay, so uh, thumbs up if you've enjoyed the movie and I'll catch you online next time.